With the first Spider-Man film being an absolute massive success, both critically and commercially, its sequel was already underway and had a lot to live up to. Much like the movie, the team over at Treyarch were under the same microscope, creating a really enjoyable title based on the first film. However, Treyarch went back to the drawing board with this sequel, trying to revolutionize the Spider-Man gaming experience and making all of Manhattan your playground to swing around. After two years in development, the team released the game alongside the movie, hoping to captivate Spidey fans across the globe. So, does Spider-Man 2 provide non-stop web-swinging wall-crawling action, or is this hefty revamp less than Excelsior? Let's find out. The game starts off with Peter Parker narrating his current life as the camera swings around through the city, rolling the cast credits and aiming to feel like a cinematic experience. Much like its predecessor, it follows much of the movie's plot, yet has plenty of liberty to deviate and tie together other characters from within the Spidey universe. As Peter Parker balances the struggle of being Spider-Man while trying to figure out how to be Peter Parker and win the girl of his dreams, Mary Jane Watson, he is caught in a rock and a hard place throughout the plot. Dr. Octavius, or Doc Ock, is the main villain this time around, but Mysterio enters the fray to cause a lot of headaches for Spidey, while Black Cat joins in, resulting in a love triangle, having mixed feelings between Mary Jane and Cat. Like the previous installment, the game does a really good job of tying all the stories together to feel like an expanded story of the film, while key moments from the film are here to experience as well. Tobey Maguire reprises his role as Spider-Man, while Alfred Molina lends his excellent talent to Doc Ock, and this time, Kirsten Dunst reprises her role as Mary Jane. All the other characters, though, do have different voice actors like Harry Osborn. Hey, buddy. MJ and I had a bet going on whether you would actually show up. Thanks, Harry. Now, the game swings quickly into the actual gameplay. The intro is quite quick, and right away you are standing on a rooftop with Bruce Campbell returning to teach you the basics, well, at least the new basics, since all the mechanics have been completely changed from the previous game. This tutorial is optional, of course, but advise to tackle if it really is your first time playing it. Never before has Manhattan been completely open to swing around in a Spider-Man game, and for 2004, this truly was a one-of-a-kind experience. You can swing around by simply pressing the R trigger down, and can do speed boost while holding down the L trigger as you swing. You'll also notice now that Spidey's webs actually attach to the buildings and objects, providing for a heavily physics-based swinging mechanic. Initially, there's a learning curve to this, but once you grasp the mechanics and get into the swing of it, pun intended, it feels so gratifying. As you swing, you can even hold down the A button to charge up your jump and launch off of the swing. You can gauge how high your jump will be with the yellow meter on the heads up display. Granted, this also applies to when you're running around and you want to launch into the air, or going up buildings and want to scale them faster. Traversal is obviously a massive part to feeling like Spider-Man, and Treyarch really broke the mold here. Not only does swinging just feel great, but connecting swinging with running on walls, jumping off of them, and then starting another swinging action really brought about the most elaborate feeling to being Spider-Man. You can even grab onto street poles and swing off of them before connecting to another swinging action. Additionally, Spider-Man has a sprint action when holding down the L trigger and can sprint infinitely, so no worries on his stamina there. The sprint can naturally actually be combined with your jump action, which feels great most of the time, but furthermore implemented into the combat. Speaking of the combat, that has been changed entirely here as well. Combat is relegated to using the B button to punch down thugs, Y button to web up enemies, and the X button to dodge when your spidey sense tingles. You can beat down enemies with relative ease, and dodging is simple to use, as once you see the spidey sense visual cue, you can dodge and you can actually counterattack back if quick. You could sprint towards enemies and press the B button to uppercut them into the air, then jump up and keep comboing them into the air. You can even use your web when airborne to yank enemies up toward you and stay airborne for much of the combat, which feels really good once you get into the rhythm of this. While the camera does a fairly good job of keeping frame of the action on screen, there is a lock-on feature like its predecessor to help focus on specific enemies or objects pressing down on the D-pad and switching lock-on with left and right on the C-stick. Your webs still play a big part as expected as well, and you can web up enemies as usual, as well as fire web projectiles. However, you can also web enemies and spin them around with the analog stick, hitting foes around you. Furthermore, you can even string up enemies to a lamppost when you get a certain upgrade, and just constantly pummel them to no end. 
Additionally, to spice up the combat more, you can activate your spidey senses pressing up on the D-pad, which will slow down time, letting you pull off entirely different combos and dishing out double damage. This will consume the blue meter underneath your health and replenishes over time when you're swinging through the city or defeating more enemies. And to build upon the combat more, you can earn hero points, whether defeating enemies, completing missions, etc. You can go to stores around Manhattan that allow you to buy upgrades throughout the game. These range from faster swing speeds to a whole slew of additional combos and moves for combat. As you acquire more of these, the combat truly opens up immensely. So much for you. You guys. In terms of missions, the game is structured in a chapter format for the story, where each chapter has you completing certain objectives before you can advance to the next chapter. This can range from completing a specific story mission, as well as earning a certain amount of hero points, to completing a daily bugle assignment, and more. The story missions will provide a bit of variety too. Sometimes you'll be tasked with following Black Cat, while other times you'll be facing off against certain thugs in the city itself, and naturally there will be boss battles that await. The game's more creative missions do reside in the Mysterio segments, like this platforming segment where you can't be spotted, or going into this fun house of horrors, where either the entire mansion is upside down, or you're facing off against these lanky Spider-Man clones. The missions that follow the movie's story do a fairly good job at replicating scenes like trying to disable the reactor here, to the bank heist battle, and the infamous train fight, although this one isn't quite as good, but I'll discuss that one later. The missions are paced well overall though, and they never feel drawn out. The boss battles you'll tackle do have some good creativity to them as well, whether facing off against the rhino, which serves as a way to acclimate to the dodging mechanic, to facing off against Shocker yet again, to the inventive fights against Mysterio like the segment on Liberty Island, and the battles that await against Doc Ock, each boss fight is entertaining for the most part. Aside from the main story missions, the city is littered with things to do. First off, there are constantly pedestrians in need of help, showcased with the green dot on the minimap here. Sometimes there's a carjacking in progress to stop, other times thugs are ganging up on cops, civilians may be harmed and need assistance getting to the hospital, and then there are times where workers are dangling off of a building that need to be rescued and brought back to ground level. There's a decent variety interwoven here, and still more types of hero missions I haven't discussed. If you fail a hero mission, you will lose some hero points, but completing them obviously nets the opposite. There are also random occurrences that appear on the minimap with a purple marker. These are incidences that are already in action, like thugs ganging up on a civilian or a kid losing his balloon. Careful now. Say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spidey. Additionally, there are a large number of races you can tackle littered throughout the city. Simply open up your map and you can see where all of these are located throughout Manhattan. These all vary in difficulty and have you either just swinging through the checkpoints or tricking through them by running on walls or landing right on the actual checkpoint. There are medals to go for here as well, depending on how fast you can complete these, and the higher the medal, the more hero points you'll net out of it. If all of these weren't enough, you could do pizza missions where you can deliver those pizzas as fast as possible, but you have to be careful not to damage the pizza too much either. It's quirky, but it fits considering Peter Parker has a really hard time delivering pizzas in the movie. Also, throughout the city are a plethora of collectible coins based on secret locations, skyscrapers, etc. And if all that wasn't enough, there are roughly 200 green help icons to find and access throughout Manhattan, each with Bruce Campbell providing you commentary and tips and tricks, and naturally, mocking you a bit in the process too. Additionally, upon beating the game, you can unlock a battle arena within the warehouse where you fought Shocker and take on various waves of enemies. This is a neat little bonus to discover and will test your combat skills to the max. There's no question the amount of content here aside from the story missions is staggering and will keep me coming back for quite some time. As much as Spider-Man 2 brought about this fresh experience that has never been done before, there are some gripes I have with this game that further showcase themselves during my latest playthrough. First up, while the controls are mostly fine, it's the combination of swinging controls and connecting it with running up buildings that occasionally provides for some inconsistent results. The amount of times I was swinging towards a building and wanted to run up that building, and instead of running up, Spider-Man would actually run downward towards the street despite the fact that I was holding up on the analog stick. It sometimes felt more like a case of luck to have him do this connecting action than something you can actually rely on. This is especially frustrating in chasing sequences and racing missions. 
The camera is another one I'm not too keen on. It's so far zoomed out, and while it gives the sense of scale of how Spider-Man looks compared to the size of Manhattan, it somewhat detracts from the action. Spider-Man in general just looks so small on screen. Also, some of the story missions lack the excitement of reenacting events from the film, particularly the train battle sequence I mentioned earlier. This scene in the movie is easily the showstopper sequence. In the movie, the train is moving blisteringly fast as Spider-Man and Doc Ock fight on top of it. In the game, the train is moving in slow motion and the fight itself just feels, well, very unexciting. Furthermore, the final boss fight in this game is an exercise in frustration, more so the objective that you have to do prior to actually fighting Doc Ock. The other gripe I have is that none of the race events are listed on the minimap, resorting in constantly opening up the actual map every time to see if you're near an event you're looking for. The last thing to note is while there is a web zip mechanic still here, it does work differently than its predecessor where you can't just web zip up to a ceiling or to a building, but rather you just kind of web zip toward that object. And honestly, there's times where I feel like an actual web zip like the predecessor would have been more handy, especially in the indoor environments. Spider-Man 2 did turn heads by bringing about an open world to swing around in this time, and while the game performs well, the game's visuals definitely feel like a step back and understandably so. Instead of environments having less space to explore, here is all of Manhattan to swing around at your leisure, meaning that the game needs to keep loading up objects and textures as you swing around. Spider-Man's character model does look less detailed, but thankfully animates very smoothly. NPCs, on the other hand, are a mixed bag. Villains and more important characters like MJ are detailed enough where their mouths move when they talk and have animated gestures. NPCs on the streets, though, asking for help, usually just stand there deadpanned and their mouths never move when talking to you. However, this also appears to be the case only when the gameplay is going on, as the cutscenes in between do load for a second or two, which I believe are loading their speech animations. New York City as a whole does look good for its time, and while it's understandable the art direction did take a hit, it did make it clear that there was plenty of room for improvement, and was proven with their follow-up, Ultimate Spider-Man, which I did review last year as well, and I'll leave a link for that in the description down below. The game does maintain a stable 30 frames per second, thankfully, despite how much is happening within Manhattan. There is a day and night cycle that showcases New York City quite well, whether seeing the buildings illuminate at night, or reflections all along the windows during the daytime. There's more ragdoll physics here as well than its predecessors, which can be comical naturally at times. While I will say that Spider-Man 1 looks better visually and artistically, this was still a good first step with this brand new engine to handle the open world. In terms of audio, as mentioned earlier, the game does retain three of the main actors from the film. The voice acting does what it needs to, but I will say, Toby sounds a little bit more monotone recording for this installment than its predecessor. Problem? The sound effects do a good job of capturing the experience, whether beating down foes, hearing the ambiance of New York City as you swing through, while also hearing that thwip every time you web swing, it all summons up for a solid audio package. As for the music, it blends as a hybrid of orchestrated songs to feel like the movie counterpart, depending on certain sequences. However, the game does excel with its electronica soundtrack done by KMFDM. During the combat sequences and story missions, and the racing side missions, the KMFDM composed music plays here instead, and dang, it is truly some awesome tunes to listen to here. The tune in particular that is just so badass is the one that you first hear when facing off against Shocker. That one never gets old to hear. However, the main gripe I do have with the audio is that there is absolutely no music while free roaming. I get trying to capture the feel of being Spider-Man, but the lack of any music during free roaming takes part of the excitement away. But there is a way I got around this a bit. I would typically start a race event, which triggers music to play, and then just swing around for about 10 minutes until the game forced me to fail the event. It is better than nothing, I suppose. The audio does a great job overall when it fires up. It just needed more to accompany you during your web swinging. Spider-Man 2 set this new standard for the Web Slinger, which almost every other game would follow, outside of a handful more linear installments later on. 
having Manhattan in your fingertips to swing around was unlike anything we'd seen for the web slinger yet, and it was exhilarating. While the missions themselves are entertaining, alongside a fun combat system and high energy soundtrack, it is a game that didn't quite age as well as its follow-up, Ultimate Spider-Man. Regardless, the gameplay was a step up from its predecessor and is one of the best movie-based games for the sixth generation, no question. It's still a blast to play and one worth experiencing to see how open-world Spider-Man games all began.